Okay, here we are. We are ready. How's it going, John? It's going well. I'm excited about our giving day. It's coming up in I know. less than 11 hours. <laughs> yes, I know. So we were here a little over a week ago, right? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, to talk about the upcoming Impact Anaheim Giving Day, which is tomorrow. 24 hours of straight giving, um, all benefiting the youth of Anaheim. So welcome back. Yeah, thank you for having me back. Yeah, of course. Um, so today we're just going as a, a, um, a preparation and, um, and, and notification to the community. We've had a series of interviews the past uh, week and a half, learning about the organizations that are gonna be participating. Yeah. Um, which were a lot of fun. I thought they were great. Absolutely, yeah. And today we're going to learn a little bit more about um, the ACF fund, and then we've got some guests that you're going to bring on to talk about how ACF, um, being the Community Foundation, partners very closely with city programs um, and the Youth Fund, and what the Youth Fund will will help uh, kind of guide. Yeah. So first, um, any opening thoughts on the Giving Day and tomorrow? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, we're in unprecedented times right now, and the needs of youth are, I think, more important than ever. I mean, now youth, you know, we need to help them overcome barriers of, you know, educational, emotional, physical development. And the fact that we have nine organizations coming together collaboratively, each of us in our own way, serving the needs of youth and teens, um, it just makes it all that more timely and important. So I'm really happy. To, I mean, on behalf of the Anaheim Community Foundation, which you know, I've been the executive director for a little over a year and a half now, and I served on the board many years before that, so I have a real strong kinship with ACF, but as well as being in the nonprofit sector for the past 20 years um, with all the other nonprofits who are going to be involved in this special day. Yeah, I know. It's exciting. And this is... Um uh, the Giving Day has been done before, um, yep. right, here in Anaheim, just a little little different. Uh, new orgs are, same orgs are in the group, and there's some new orgs, which I think yep. is very exciting. So it's um, overall just a good day, too, for people to just learn about yep. the organizations that are working and delivering services in, in Anaheim. So yep. awesome. Okay, well, then let's uh, talk about today. So who do we have joining us? So, you know, in thinking about who to invite, I, I, I was thinking about, well, first, before I introduce our, our guest, mm -hmm. um, that, that there's two ways specifically this giving day is going to help you through the Anaheim Community Foundation. Okay. Um, two funds that we have focused on youth are the Youth Scholarship Fund, which helps families who, who low-income families, to sign up for community-based programs through the Community Services Department of the city, whether it be mm -hmm. camp or STEM or the arts or sports. It's an array of programs. And as we kind of enter hopefully soon this recovery mode we want to be ready to be able to help these families who need us most so we have a fund especially set up for that to help families who need us to sign up maybe they can only afford to sign up one of their kids and now they can ha add another sibling to have more of the family involved so that's one way and the other way is sort of helping hands grant program so when you give to acf we also have a fund that helps re-grant this money to other youth serving organizations so um I, I worked closely with Joe Perez from the city for, for many years, just a, a great guy, great leader, and just truly dedicated to youth. And he knows, you know, again, the inside out of the of the Youth Scholarship Fund and, and also the Helping Hands grant program, mm -hmm. of which Project Say has been a beneficiary. So I thought he could actually shed more light and share some of the impact behind that. So it's Joe Perez. He's a superintendent of community services with the uh, with the city of Anaheim. So I'll just All turn right. it over to you. And you yeah. Well, here he is. How are you guys? Good afternoon. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Thank you. Hi, Victoria. Hi, John. Hey, Joe. Thank you all for the invite. Of course, of course. So I noticed um, you are not remote working today. No, no. I mean, obviously, with you know COVID nineteen and the situation that we are um, facing in all of our communities, um, we've been doing a little bit of both, working from home and um, and then coming in coming into work. Yeah, I know you guys have definitely been a part of the the frontline workers in the city. I know you're you and your team really have been nonstop since it's well, you haven't stopped, right? You've been even probably doing more since before COVID hit. Right. Yeah. No, it's been interesting that, you know, and we've talked about it at a drop of a dime, things changed and um, you know, we've had to be flexible and adjust all of our programming to meet yeah. the most critical needs um, of our community. So Right. I think that applies to everybody working in yeah. the human field. 
Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. So why don't you say more about your role and yeah. also the community service, Anaheim Community Services Department in general? Sure. Yeah. So um, as John mentioned, I'm the community services superintendent for the city of Anaheim. I manage uh, the human services programs and what that really means are programs for the community to be able to help support and guide folks that are living in our neighborhoods, our residents. Um, I've been, yeah, been working, uh, doing this or managing the um, uh, section for about 10 years now, but I am a, a lifelong Anaheim, you know, resident. Um, recently, you know, um, with everything that's been going on, um, you know, it's just brought to the forefront, again, us coming together, being from Anaheim and then joining others that um, have um, the same mindset and being able to help our residents. Um, it really just, um, you know, it goes goes far in terms of being able to help those that are out there. What our department does directly for the city of Anaheim, um, you know, we basically are entrenched in the neighborhoods. And so we are um, in the parks, we're in the libraries, we're in the playgrounds, we're in the community centers, family resource centers, all of the municipal government facilities that you can think of where we provide service and support our residents, um, that's where we are. So the Anaheim Community Foundation plays a huge role in being able to help support where the city can't do. Um, it fills the gap and I kind of look at it similar to the nonprofit sector is that it fills the gap. You know, the city can only do so much. That's where again, the community and the nonprofit partners come in, uh, the foundation being a huge part of that and being able to help us do what we do in support of our uh, youth and families in the community. That's great. Yeah, I think it's so great that um, public-private partnership of this, you know, the city knowing what they can do with the resources that they have monetarily, and then having a community foundation to lean on and say, you know, hey, this is what we we really need. We, there's what we need to do, and then what we would like to do, and and communicating with one another on trying to fill that gap to make that happen. Um, so I think that's a great example of how community foundations can work with Absolutely. city. Absolutely. So let's talk about then Project A and how that fits into the uh, to your um, uh, your city, but then also in supporting youth and schools. I know that there's a, a lot of partnership involved with Pro Project A. Sure. So Project A has been around for about 30 years, actually. Um, 89, actually 31, maybe. Yeah, what's the number? 31 years. Mm -hmm. um, it actually started through a, an assessment that was done in the city. And at the time, there was a huge gang and drug problem in the city. And, um, you know, there was some funding that was earmarked to be able to help young people here in the community that were involved in gangs and involved in drugs. And through that, um, you know, it, we created this program called Project A. Um, at the time, the acronym stood for um, Save a Youth. Uh, but in time, we thought it best to um, rebrand it as Support Anaheim's Youth. and. That's what we are. So it is a, a program that helps young people directly through uh, partnerships with the school districts here in Anaheim. Um, foundation, obviously a big player in that as well, to be able to help support young people in the work that they do. So we have full-time outreach workers that uh, work directly in the schools and in the neighborhoods to be able to help young people that are struggling with um, academic failure, uh, that may be having some attendance or truancy issues with school, or that may be having some behavior issues, uh, whether it be gangs, drugs, graffiti, you name it. Um, and so through that work, through the case managers, um, they work directly with young people and their families to be able to help support them. You know, um, yes, we are um, focused primarily in our um, schools, but we take referrals from ev everybody basically, and we get, you know, the cold calls from families to say, hey, I need help. My son, daughter are doing this, that, or the other. And that's where, um, you know, our case managers are really um, just, you know, magicians really to be able to um, connect. Yeah. Is, yeah, talk about magicians with John. You know, the resources that, that we um, have in the community that are available for folks, um, we basically are the conduit to connect the resources to the folks that need it and then provide a, a, a helping hand to help guide the young people and not only young people, but their families as well. You know, the right. work it is really, um, it, it's, it's, it's that wraparound service. It's not just helping the young person, it's helping everybody that um, affects their life, whether it be school, community or home. 
Awesome. That's great. And so, to that, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, and, you know, back, I know we had a, a full on human services and needs assessment a few decades ago, but, you know, about, about eight years ago, we did that youth services assessment as well. And one of the big findings there, which I think is still true, is that there is, there's a gap in services for teens. There's, there's a lot of programs for, for, for youth and we can always use more, but it, it, it tends to taper off when it gets into the middle school and, and, and high school uh, ages. Yeah. So, and it also found that, you know, youth need experiential learning opportunities and they want to lead, their voices want to be heard. And I think Project Say is one of those programs that really fills that gap. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I think every child, youth needs an outlet and a safe place to go to. So, um, John, uh, Joe, can you share? I know that Project Say is embedded in to the schools, right? That's kind of how you leverage. So you want to talk about that and the schools that are involved? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, our, it's our relationships, obviously, that we've built over the course of a number of years with the Anaheim Union High School District administrators and school staff that are on campus. But we do have an outreach worker um, case manager that is in every junior high and feeder high school um, here in the Anaheim Union High School District, You know, mainly concentrated in the central city schools. Um, but again, what we do is on a daily is have the outreach workers um, have office hours on campus where fo young people can come and, and meet with them. Um, certainly, we take referrals from school administrators as well, um, principals, teachers, uh, vice principals, counselors that know about the program and then connect the young person. If we know that they're struggling with their um, academics, then you know we find the resources for them to be able to connect out so we're available to um you know folks in the community through the schools but then also have our teen centers that then we link up that after school hours you know we have the teen centers where young people can come to the teen center so that um you know the community then can come directly to the teen center meet and uh, uh, discuss, you know, a case with an outreach worker to be able to then, you know, put together a success plan on what needs to happen for that young person to be um, either re-engaged in school or reconnected to the um, resources they need to be able to be successful. So, Which I think when I heard about the model, it's very rare um, for city <laughs> employees um, to have that role, and usually it's a nonprofit, right? That's providing case management type work. But this is very unique, where a city takes on a human services type mentality and role, and to be placed in the school then, and then to follow, right? Because the idea too is that the the um, case manager follows them, because continuity is so important with youth, right? That they feel once Absolutely. once they get attached to anyone, it's important for them to remain with them. So I, I applaud the model. I think it, having a human services background and going to school, it's like, wow, um, that's unique. So congratulations for well, me. It really is. And I mean, again, it's, it's, um, it all, you know, stems from this assessment again, that was done here in the city uh, many years ago, but uh, yeah, the model and uh, to show how unique it is, I think LA, the city of LA has a program similar but it's not as embedded in the schools as we are embedded yeah. in the schools. And that's really where the relationship starts, really. Um, you know, again, it, it's, 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 that's how we're able to support through the academics, school being so important and, yeah. you know, young folks' main objective, again, graduate, um, you know, with the, that's where we, are, we focus our work and that's where we receive our, the majority of our referrals are through yeah. the the uh, you know those refer the the um, administrators on school campus. Mm -hmm. um, one other program back in like New York, but there really it is it is a unique where a city municipality uh, yeah. thinks so highly of young people in their community that they invest in um, the program to be able to help support and help guide them um, ultimately to be successful. Um, right. You know, yeah. that's great. Yeah, citizens, so. Wonderful. Well, I have news. Um, Cassandra has joined us. So we're going to bring Cassandra in and have her share a testimonial. So give me one second. Let's bring her in so she can talk more about Project Say and give the, the teen perspective. Awesome. Hi, there she is. Cassandra, how are you? Hi, Cassandra. Good. Cassandra. Glad you made it. <laughs> Finally, yes. I know we had I know you were struggling through those technical difficulties. So, bravo for your 
uh, for sticking in there. So thank you. Well, Joe um, Perez just got done talking about Project Say and, and what it's about. Um, and we'd love for you to share your experience with Project Say and how it's been, um, how it's attributed to your success and, and what you like about it. So the floor is yours. Okay. Um, so Project Say, I don't know, to me, it's taught me a lot of leadership qualities that I didn't have before. So it taught me how to be like more confident into like being able to talk to a lot of more people by being put in a lot of like positions mm -hmm. where you're more involved with people in our community. Okay. Um, <laughs> we've also done a lot of things where it brings out people. So mm -hmm. we attend like a lot of events here in the city and that kind of brings everyone that's usually like more secluded out to our community and to me it's like it just feels more like um more like in inviting community to us that's great and what what site are you located what project say site do you go to um the one um near anaheim city hall it's like right next to city hall so it's the anaheim youth center Oh, okay. Awesome. Is that Joe? Is that the downtown youth center? Yeah, yeah, the downtown Anaheim youth center. Yes, absolutely. Okay, perfect. And Cassandra, tell me what's been. You said leadership skills. So, what's been the most important leadership skill you think that you've acquired and grown into thanks to Project Day? That communication is key to every accomplishment. So, yeah. you always have to learn how to communicate with others to be able to accomplish very. A lot of things, yeah. yeah. That's good. Well, you're communicating well right now. So this is public speaking. You could put that now on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, Cassandra, kind of, it's the opportunities. If you, you know, kind of, it's really the opportunities that Project Say provides to young people. And it's really, it's about exposure, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I just can't give enough credit to our, our six oh. case managers that we have that are working in junior high and high schools. Um, and each individual program at each individual school site is unique because it allows for the outreach worker to provide their own uh, personality into the program and their own likes, dislikes, to be able to share and to be able to expose young people to different opportunities. And that's really what we're about. It's about engaging young people, connecting them to new experiences so that they become successful in whatever endeavor they um, wish to set out um, to, um, you know, uh, to accomplish for themselves yeah. um, and, and using education as kind of the foundation to be able to, to get, you know, to get there. Right. That's awesome. So for the teens that are listening right now, how would you say to them, like they're thinking, oh, I want to get involved. I want to meet Cassandra. Um, what do they need to do right now? Get, like, and, and is there anything going on in, with Project Say during COVID? And for um, you Yes, so sorry. Um, yes, right now we are still doing like meetings online to try to get still together with our groups and we do activities. So we do like a drop off pickup. So we like can pick up art supplies and then bring them home. And then we do our activities together online. So that's what we're doing right now. Yep. So you guys are doing it? Yes. Cool. Huh? Okay. If I can add, that's been part of the shift, as I shared at the onset. We've been yeah. having to redo kind of how we do our business. Um, the Certainly the uh, virtual connections are just, you know, what have been holding us together. And then we're, we're looking forward to see kind of where the school district goes and where we then will connect back in um, yeah. as a city in general looks to reopen our programs and facilities here in the near future. That's okay. the part of the discussion is that we'll be having with the um, our partners in the, the schools to see what their plans are and how we can connect back in reopening our teen centers and then reopening our presence, obviously, on campus, um, in whatever fashion that may mean. So still is to be determined. Great. So if a teen is listening right now and they want to get involved in the Zoom calls or the meetings, what do they do? Do you have a Facebook page, website? How do they get connected with Project Say? So um, right now, oh, go ahead. Talk talk about your no. Talk about uh, the Anaheim Anaheim oh, Um, we have an Instagram page, so they can follow us at um, AHS Project Say. Okay. And we post a lot of stuff there. Okay. So and Instagram. 
Yes. And then in general for Project A, um, our, our program supervisor um, is who takes in the phone calls and then provides a referral out to the, um, the um, sector where that young person lives in. And so um, we have present on um, Anaheim.net under youth programs, Project A has a, a page that you can also gain more information on as to okay. where, um, yeah, where you would sign up. Great, we'll make sure we add that in the um, Facebook feed in the comments so people who are watching can get that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Cassandra, you wanna add about the uh, about Project A and what it's meant to you or anyone listening, anything else you wanna add? Um, that it's just great to get involved, that um, mm -hmm. you don't have to be like a very outgoing person to be able to communicate with other people. You're taught that, you are you meet new people, you go through new experiences. It's just to get out there and be able to just set your mind to it. Yeah. Good, yeah, networking is important and having opportunities like this one, now you can share with your friends, like, look, I was on Facebook Live with the city and Anaheim Community Foundation. Like, I think uh, in the future, we, um, uh, virtual portfolios are not very far away from uh, getting jobs. And so you can <laughs> your portfolio. Congrats. Awesome. Well, Joe, is there anything else you'd like to add about Project Say? No, I think I uh, just, again, thank you both for the opportunity to be able to share kind of what Project Say does. Um, we're here to help every, we don't turn anybody away. That's one thing I, I did want to mention. Uh, we'll get referrals from all over, uh, sometimes from our parents looking for that magic camp right? That there, there's some yeah. magical camp that's out there where they can send their kids to yeah. and then everything will be fixed. Uh, but, you know, it's funny because, you know, we obviously involve them. This is their part of the process. And yeah. so, you know, turn anybody away, uh, you know, if there's an issue that they're having with their young person or, or simply want them to connect into a positive uh, program with positive role models that provide challenging opportunities mm -hmm. and new experiences, we are here for everyone. So um, by all means, you know, look us up through our webpage, um, give us a call. Um, more than happy to take on, um, you know, more, more youth that are out there that need us. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, Cassandra, thank you so much for, for hanging in there and working through your tech issues. We are so glad that you're able to make it. This was awesome. Um, I'm going to, I'm gonna let you off the hook in case you have something to do. Um, and we're gonna go back to, to John and Joe and finish up um, finish up talking about the giving day. So thank you so much for being here, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Cassandra. Thanks for sharing. Oh, she was yeah. great. Um, yeah. glad it <laughs> um, so as we close out, John, is there anything uh, you wanna add about giving day and how people sure. can make it, um, help us make it successful? Yeah, I just have to say what what an amazing uh, person Cassandra is. And that's just like one example, one story of many people who are helping. Like, I want to add to my resume that I was on a, an event with something like her. So um, well, thank you yeah. for inviting her to be on, on the on the uh, on the chat today. So, yeah, so um, we've we've learned a little bit about the NI Community Foundation and two of the youth serving programs that um, that by supporting ACF during um, Impact Anaheim Day. Um, you'll support. So our youth scholarship fund and also our Helping Hands grant program, which helps benefit programs like Project Say. So we're really excited about that. But we, I also just want to give a quick shout out to the other nonprofits. This is a collaborative day. We have a, we have a collaborative goal of $75,000 within 24 hours. It kicks off at midnight tonight. So um, in addition to the Anna, uh, Community Foundation, we have Anaheim Ballet, Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, Chance Theater, Girls Inc., uh, the Family Oasis Family Resource Center, Pure Game, and Voice of Refugees. So wow. if you've heard of any of those, uh, we, we, they're all doing their own promotion on social media. So as a donor, you have the opportunity to support any one of those um, or to give to ACF to have an array of impact. And uh, yeah, it's just a way to get meaningfully involved on, on one special day that will ultimately uh, benefit youth and teens of Anaheim. So yeah, that's so I'll close with that. Wonderful, wonderful. Joe, any last thoughts or anything else you want to say about about uh, Anaheim and the community services program? And yeah. Just another thank you. Again, the foundation does so much for a lot of people in the community. We're so thankful to have the opportunity to be able to um, partner with the foundation. 
And, you know, we couldn't do what we do without the foundation. And so we urge everybody, if you're able to give, any little bit counts, goes towards that larger goal. Uh, but yeah, we're again, we are um, just thankful, very thankful and blessed to have the relationship that we have with the foundation and um, are able to provide all the programs and support that we do to our youth and families in the community. Awesome. It's a great partnership because I mean, you you yeah. focus on what you know best, right? You know, working yeah. with teens like Cassandra, uh, uh, mobilizing volunteers and staff to, to serve these teens in various locations. Mm -hmm. Well, the Anna Beauty Foundation can focus on the philanthropy side, you know, on making sure we fill that gap in terms of the donation dollars that are needed to run this program and getting people involved in philanthropy. So that's a great partnership. And of course, Victoria, who does many things with Samueli Foundation, but also <laughs> these live events and bringing their, our, 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 our Orange County and Anaheim nonprofit community together. So yeah, what a great trio. And this yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. It fun. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fun. Given the times that we're in, you got to find ways to make it fun. So, right, right. well, thank you both for joining and um, good luck tomorrow, tomorrow. The goal, overall goal, John, is $75,000. And $20,000. ACF has a $20,000 goal. That's part of an overall $75,000 collaborative goal. So, yeah. we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We can yeah. totally do it. All right. Well, um, for those of you who have peer to peer um, page is up. Thank you uh, in advance for what you're doing and good luck. If you don't have one yet, it's not too late. Feel free to go to the Impact Anaheim um, link and, or contact one of those organizations that John shared and you can set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. And um, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to have a series of check-ins tomorrow. So come back to the ACF uh, Facebook page if you want to see how we're doing. But overall, um, just uh, if you can't support financially, you know, I know times are tough, like a like a nonprofit, comment, share the postings, anything right now works too when it comes to marketing. So we appreciate all of that, right? Great stuff, yeah, absolutely. All right, okay, well, you guys have a great day. Be safe and we'll talk to you later. That's good, thanks, Jeff, thanks for joining. Bye.